Today, we're thinking about what the Apostle Paul meant when he said we should wear the armour of God. So are you ready to stand firm today? Well, hello everyone and welcome to Kamza Connect. This is your weekly worship service from the Salvation Army Cambridge Citadel in the United Kingdom. We're glad you've tuned in, whether you're at home or worshipping with us in person at the barracks. Do say hello to each other in the YouTube chat. Yes, and you are all welcome to worship with us in person at the barracks and you'll find the address details for that in the video description below. Now, we're still on holiday, so we filmed this ahead of time. We're still having a lovely time, aren't we? We're having a lovely time, definitely. And uh, we're just having a 99 flake as these people watch this, aren't we? Is that what we're from doing? From Maud's. Um, from Maud's ice cream. And we're getting a suntan. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's Northern Ireland. Will it be sunny? Of course it will. <laughs> well, thank you for all your prayers and thoughts for us. And we look forward to seeing you all soon. Not too soon, though, but we'll see you next week. Well, as you can see, our theme today is Armour of God. And a little later, our guest speaker, Anne Howlett Foster, will be helping us to understand how the Armour of God is so vital to life as a Christian in the world today. We'll also be thinking about the fact that God is our strength and refuge. Excellent stuff. Well, we've also got time for the children with Jonathan, who, as you can see, for some reason is holding a chair in his hands. And we'll have music from our amazing Young People's Band, who will be telling us in music just how good God is. Excellent. Well, I'm very pleased that we're commencing today's time of worship with a song from my part of the world. This Irish 8th century song asks God to be our armour and protect us as we live for him. So let's join together in singing, Be Thou My Vision.
Well, thanks for that really good sing. That's a song a lot of us would have sung in school uh, years ago. And by the way, we know you're not Irish as well, uh, because Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom, so that means Leanne is British. And if you want to read more about the confusing geography of the United Kingdom and how all of that has come about, then let us know when you've worked it out, because we'd like to know too. Isn't that Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> OK, then. Well, it's time to share in some moments of prayer. And we wonder whether your eyes are open today. Are you seeing God at work in the world and in your life? Well, in a moment, we'll join in singing a chorus which asks God to open our eyes to see him today. But first, we're going to share in a prayer and here to lead us is one of our congregation members, Pat. So shall we pray together? Lord of the morning, let the brightness of your presence scatter the darkness that is about us. Open our eyes to see your glory. Open our hearts to feel your love. And that is our prayer as we gather together this morning, Lord. Thank you for all your goodness to us and in the beauty that we see around us. We are mindful this morning that there are those around the world and in our own core family that need our prayerful support at this time and we ask that they may feel your presence with them. Paul told the Ephesians to put on your armour, so if we do the same, putting on the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shoes of peace, we know that you are with us in whatever situation we are placed. And we thank you, Lord, for that assurance. Thank you for sending your Son who made our relationship with you possible. And as we continue the service this morning, may all who are listening find blessing and grant to us the vision to see you, minds to seek you, and hearts to love you. Amen. Well, thanks very much for sharing in prayer. And let's make sure that today our eyes are truly open to what God is doing in our lives and in the lives of those around us and in the world. Absolutely. Well, coming up, we'll hear from the Young People's Band who this week are playing a march called God is Good. And after that, Steve will be here once again to bring us the weekly update and we'll have the online offering. Before all of that, though, boys and girls, here is Jonathan with a story for you. Now, thankfully, he's not blowing a raspberry. Uh, you need to see episode 66 of Kamza Connect if you want to know more about that. But he is going to tell us all about why it's a good idea to have some tools in your house. So thanks, Jonathan. Good morning, everyone. Have you ever realised that most jobs in life need certain tools in order for them to be done well? And without those tools, they just can't be done. So rock climbers tend to need ropes and pickaxes to get grips into the rock for them to be able to climb rock faces. 
and chefs to make a meal can't just do it with their bare hands. They need pans and knives and ovens, and without those, they, just, they couldn't make anything. We've experienced this very recently in moving into our new home because we got furniture sent to us in lots of bits that we just could not make into complete sets of furniture. For example, we got sent things like this, it's just bits of chairs, and we can't put these together by ourselves. But happily, the people we bought them from also sent us these tools. So they sent us these these screws and these Allen keys. And with these tools, we can fit these pieces together to make complete bits of furniture, like this. <laughs> We're very proud of that. So we need the tools in order to be able to actually do the job. And just like this, God gives us the tools in order to live a good life. When we see conflicts happening in, in our friends or just with people we know, we can put on the boots of peace that God gives to us and try and make that situation better. If we are tempted to do things that we know God doesn't want us to do, we can use the shield of faith and trust that God knows what is best for us. And when we feel ashamed, like God doesn't love us or we're not good enough to be in God's family, God gives us the breastplate of righteousness so that we know that God sees us as righteous because of this breastplate he's given us and that we are God's children. So I hope you can see that God has given us the tools that we need to live life the way he wants us to and that's best for us. And that all we need to do is just take the free gifts of the tools that he gives us in order to live a godly life today. God bless you. Well, thanks to the YP band for that brilliant piece of music and to Jonathan too for reminding us about the tools God gives us to be Christians in the world today. The officer said I might like to tell a joke, but as the band knows, I only have true stories. So here is one. A Salvation Army officer and a solicitor were waiting outside the gates of heaven for admission. St Peter came and ushered them inside, but it took a while to do the paperwork because the angels were working from home. After all had been completed, they were taken off to see their accommodation. The solicitor's was a massive great big 12 bedroom mansion with a lovely tree lined avenue and a swimming pool. Oh, it was fantastic. They then went off to see the Salvation Army officer's accommodation. 
This was a little wooden run-down shack with no electricity or water. St Peter noticed the look of concern on the Salvation Army officer's face and asked him what the matter was. Well, said the Salvation Army officer, all my life I've worked and strived to bring people into the Kingdom of God and to work for you. He said, and I get this shack when the solicitor got a massive great big mansion. Ah, said St Peter, you see we've got thousands of Salvation Army officers up here in heaven, but he's our first solicitor. <laughs> Due to holidays, some activities are still on hold, but Kids Time can be found on this channel at 9am on Sunday, followed by Camza Connect. As I mentioned last week, Brass Reflections and Prayer Matters are taking a summer break, but will be back in September. Our Corps officers are still on their second week of holidays, so please contact Corps Sergeant Major Norman with any urgent Corps matters. Thanks for listening everybody, now let's take part in our online offering. Well, thanks for giving in the online offering. And if you'd like to give to Cambridge Citadel Salvation Army without using the gift app, then please check out the video description below for instructions on how to do that. Okay then, well, it's time for us to head towards Ephesians chapter six and to discover what all this talk on the armor of God is about. Did you know that there are six items that comprise the armor of God? The first three you put on, and the second three you take up. Okay, well, thanks, you've given us that for free, haven't you? That's good to know. And my free take on this passage is that it's all designed, the armour of God, to help us stand firm in our faith. And that's what Annie will be telling us shortly. So in a moment, we'll sing a song that helps us declare that we'll call upon the strength of the Lord in the paths of life, in work he appoints us to do, and conflicts which require faith. First, though, let's read those verses from Ephesians chapter 6. So here to share them with us is Stuart. The Bible reading is taken from Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 20. The Armour of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me, that whenever I speak, words may be given, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. Amen.
we all know, the weather can be interesting. When planning something, I probably like you check the weather. Will it rain? How hot might it be? Do I need sun cream or do I need my Mac? Probably both. I love to be prepared and I often even have a backup plan. And being prepared is something we do every day, all the time without really being aware of it. But how well are we prepared spiritually? We were reminded in the reading from Ephesians chapter 6 that we can be prepared spiritually by choosing to put on the armour of God, the whole armour of God. Paul wrote this letter to the Ephesians, which comes in two clear parts and it has six chapters. The first three chapters describe what we should know to understand who we are in Christ and how to be in this new society called a church. And then Paul says, therefore, and goes on into the next three chapters, which gives us practical guidance on how we need to respond in the way we live as a disciple of Christ, including chapter six, where he describes the armour of God. Finally, brothers and sisters, draw your strength and might from God. Put on the full armour of God to protect yourselves from the devil and his evil schemes. So if we live our lives accordingly and we are honouring Christ through the way we live, we will have a fight on our hands. Evil, the devil, will want to significantly disrupt our faith and trust in God. We need to be prepared for a spiritual battle. And Paul encourages us to form habits to help us stay safe and strong as followers of Jesus. And these habits are described as armour. Paul wrote these words while in prison, so he and his readers will have been very familiar with the elements of Roman armour. Every piece of the armour of God serves a different purpose to help us withstand the spiritual pressures that we're going to face. The first three pieces of the armour are the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness and the shoes of the gospel of peace. And we should be wearing these at all times. The belt of truth means choosing to trust what God has done for us more than we trust our own feelings at any particular moment. Our feelings, our emotions, they can change and it's God's truth that never changes. We should also be truthful with ourselves about our strengths and particularly our weaknesses. What we might consider to be small sins are areas of weakness that leave us vulnerable to attack. The breastplate of righteousness is about demonstrating right behaviour, just as Jesus did. Jesus lived a life that is an example to us all, a godly and holy lifestyle for us to follow. And the shoes of the gospel of peace, well, Satan wants to steal our peace, to cause doubt and anxiety. So we need to be bold and confident in God's strength, which is living and working through us. We should be firm footed in the knowledge that God is there to help us fight the battle. We need to be clothed in these three items all the time. And then Paul goes on to say, in addition... We have some more spiritual armour and mighty weapons. Paul encourages us to hold up the shield of faith, put on the helmet of salvation and take up the sword of the spirit. The shield of faith, well I see this as a large shield covering our whole body, one that can be locked together with others to produce a wall of faith. We can walk by faith that God has the best plan for us and will meet our needs trust God and believe that his commandments are true. The helmet of salvation is there because the mind can be a battlefield of its own. Our helmet of salvation is there to protect us from the lies that want us to believe that we are not worthy, not capable. God tells us we are loved, worthy of love and already accepted. And then take up the sword of the spirit, pick up and use your Bible. Have faith in it as it's a powerful weapon. Jesus used scripture to fight off Satan when he was tempted in the desert. And we need to read and understand the word of God. 
So let's sharpen our swords by engaging more in studying the Bible, the word of God, which is full of love and rich in wisdom and truth and comfort. After describing the armour, Paul wisely adds, pray in the spirit at all times. And we should match the armour of God with prayer. Prayer should be the breath that we breathe, a consciousness of God's presence and God's strength. Prayer is the overarching practice that ties everything else together and it is only with the power of God that we are able to fight. Yes, we are able to be prepared and it's so much more important than packing the right things in your bag for a day trip. Get into the holy habit of putting on the armour of God every day, clothing ourselves in the attributes of Christ. Are you in the habit of donning the armour of God? And are there some parts of the armour that make you feel uncomfortable? As a well-loved songster piece says, if you would be strong, put your armour on, be strong in the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we ask for your help in remembering to put on your full armour every day, for you give us all that we need to stand firm in this world. Forgive us, God, for the times we've been unprepared, too busy to care or trying to fight and wrestle in our own strength. Thank you that we never fight alone, for you are constantly at work on our behalf. In the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Thanks so much, Annie, for bringing those thoughts to us. May we all be in the habit of putting on the armour of God each day. And may we each know God as our refuge and our fortress today and in the days to come. Absolutely. 
Well, that's all we've got time for this week. We'll be back next Sunday when we're thinking about how God is more concerned about what's on our inside than what's on our outside. We'll have a word of testimony and some fabulous music from our worship band. Awesome. So don't forget to like the video, if you did of course, and do click subscribe and the bell icon to be notified whenever we upload a new video. Well, as we close today's episode, we'll join in a hymn that calls the church to rise up, put its armour on and fight with faith and valour. So please join us in a final benediction before we sing. God of power and might, arm us in faith and send us out into the world to declare your good news boldly. Amen. So thanks for joining us, everyone. Until next week then, Keep safe, keep well, and keep connected. God, God bless, bless you. you. Oh, church, arise and put your armor on. Hear the call of Christ our captain. For now the weak can say that they are strong. The strength that God has given with shield of faith and belt of truth, we'll stand against the devil's lies and army bold whose battle cry is love, reaching out to those in darkness. Crushed beneath his feet For the conqueror